Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today we're going to be answering the question when are graphics cards going to come back in stock? Because I need some closure on this too. I have not been able to put out any new price to performance PC build guides in all honesty this whole year because you simply can't get your hands on a graphics card, especially online or anywhere near MSRP. The only graphics cards I've seen that are somewhat obtainable are going to have to be the ever desirable Radeon RX 7600, you know, very desirable. And then there are occasional spouts of the RX 7800 XT and the RX 7900 XT that do occasionally come in stock, but that was to be expected because of this graphics card right here, which did its job. So now those cards are actually coming back in stock, but they're still well overpriced. And as for Nvidia, <laughs> there's nothing. It's, it's a hellscape. Not even the RTX 4060 is available. And when that graphics card isn't available, you know the graphics card market is in serious trouble. But what is in stock and is a worthwhile investment and especially worth dropping thousands of dollars on and will improve your PC gaming performance more is investing in a high quality mattress like the sponsor of this video, NOLA Mattresses. NOLA is a premium fiberglass free mattress designed to upgrade your sleep quality and it's conveniently shipped to your door for free within the US. I chose the NOLA Evolution, which is a hybrid mattress, which comprises of both springs and different types of foam across the mattress. Meaning when I first slept on this mattress, despite how broad I am, I felt quite plush and soft on the top. So my shoulders and hips could really sink in. Yet there was still that firm spring support underneath the mattress that didn't make me feel like I was gonna fall off the mattress if I ever decided to roll or get on or off the mattress, which is quite nice. Also, there's a good amount of heat transfer actually in that mattress. With that organic cotton top combined with my cotton sheets, I felt unexpectedly cool while using this mattress, which I think did help my sleep quality as I was using the NOLA Evolution. Also, setting it up was really easy. We just unboxed it, cut out the plastic, and it expanded magically really easily. We, of course, let it air out for 24 hours, but after that period, it was a full-blown mattress that was ready to use, and we were so surprised that it came packaged up so tightly even beforehand. So that's what's cool about the mattress, but as far as the brand goes, NOLA produces all of their mattresses in-house in their Arizona factory without any harmful chemicals, where they do their own coiling, foam pouring, foam cutting, lamination, and sewing in-house, ensuring quality at every step. And if for any reason you don't like the mattress, there is a 120 night trial guarantee just to make sure you like the mattress or if you don't. And also another cool thing, you are given a limited lifetime warranty with any of these mattresses purchased from NOLA. So if you wanna make a worthwhile investment with your money in a high quality mattress, then do consider checking one out from NOLA, which if you do, I've got a link in the description and this code here on screen where you can get a discount on any of their mattresses. Once again, thank you to NOLA for sponsoring this video. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and break up this video into four sections, starting with how we got into this whole mess, how scalpers are not helping the situation, certain things coming up on the horizon that could alleviate that and in some ways introduce new problems. And then finally, the actual date for when I think graphics cards will come back in stock. So first things first, how did we get here? I think we can pinpoint this whole mess to when Nvidia decided to cut supply and production of their RTX 4000 GPUs back in November of last year, which in my opinion was a signal to all PC gamers at the time, basically saying, if you want an Nvidia graphics card, get it that Black Friday, because otherwise you won't have another shot until the new RTX 5000 GPUs. And those of us who've been around the block know scalpers were gonna hurt the launch of this regardless. So if you wanted an NVIDIA graphics card, I hope you took all of our advice and got that 4080 Super, 4070 Super, 4070 Ti Super you wanted all along. But anyways, I think NVIDIA deciding to cut production on RTX 4000 GPUs in November to then make way for RTX 5000 GPU production in December and January was definitely a bold move and didn't help out the fact that their RTX 5000 GPUs just ended up being a paper launch. And there's a few reasons for this. For one, in January, there's this thing called Chinese New Year, which is something celebrated by China and Taiwan. And they give extended periods of breaks to, from their workers to 
not show up for work essentially. And that's not great when you're trying to launch your RTX 5090 and 5080 in January. So that's where all of the paper launch memes came from for the 5090 and 5080. But I like to think in Nvidia shoes, Nvidia did wanna go ahead and probably release their graphics cards first thing in January because there's an obvious fact that the incoming US presidential administration made such a big effort to say that tariffs are gonna be the way that we're gonna generate revenue in the United States. And Nvidia probably saw that and looked at their potential launch day reviews and were like, let's set some MSRPs of all our new graphics cards before tariffs, just so then our launch day reviews can be better value in terms of pricing, because it'd look more favorable if you're comparing a $2,000 RTX 5090 versus a $1,600 RTX 4090, rather than technically like a $2,500 RTX 5090 versus a $1,600 RTX 4090. So I can definitely see why Nvidia was kind of pressured to launch their graphics cards in January, which is a bit of an awkward thing to do because typically they release their graphics cards in September, October, November, but this launch was a little bit different, potentially because of those incoming US tariffs. So all in all, there just weren't enough graphics cards for this launch. I mean, yes, AMD did technically have more stock, and actually, I think the launch day inventory they had alone was greater than all of the RTX 5000 GPUs that had been sold up until that point. But again, which brand sells more, Nvidia or AMD? Naturally, Nvidia. Nvidia needed to have more inventory on hand for this first part of this launch, which would have alleviated some of the stock and pricing issues we're seeing right now, but it also isn't helping that scalpers are adding to the situation. But overall, supply was low. But now let's talk about scalpers because I've been around the block so many times that basically accept scalpers no matter what, which is why I feel like all those people who say they'll wait for the next graphics card are always delusional because you're never gonna get it on launch day. The only way you can get one of these new graphics cards on launch without any hassle is waiting out at a micro center, which is exclusive to the United States only. But if you are trying to order one of these online, good luck, because you're not beating bots to the checkout lane to get your graphics card. It's impossible. I saw it in 2021 when PC gamers were fighting a 2v1 versus crypto miners and scalpers, which took all of our graphics cards for their nefarious purposes, saw it again for certain RTX 4000 GPUs, including the 4080 Super from last year. That thing didn't come in stock close to MSRP for at least three months after launch. So moral of the story, expect scalpers no matter what. If the ARC B580 in December of 2024 was getting scalped, you knew how bad it was gonna get for RTX 5000 and RX 9000. I think that alone should have set off a lot of red flags in the PC gaming space that we were gonna see just a heck of a lot of scalping going into this new generation of graphics card launch. But it's a little bit different because in 2021, there were reasons to scalp and that was because you could make money off of Ethereum mining. Scalpers could obviously make money off of reselling graphics cards on the used marketplace. But this time in 2025, it's a little bit different because there's no like cryptocurrency boom. There's not really necessarily a shortage of chips. I mean, sure, there's some supply issues with RTX 5000 right now, but I think there's a bit of FOMO that is playing into the minds of consumers that are making them think they need to get a graphics card right now because of potential US tariffs, which is the next thing I wanna talk about. So supply is short, scalpers will be there no matter what, but I think what's really setting things into motion are the threat of tariffs. I mean, heck, some of these tariffs I'm about to talk about haven't even come into effect, and we don't even know if they're gonna be applied or not realistically. It seems like with the current president, He's on board with tariffs on one week and then decides to roll it back the next week, like what he did for certain auto tariffs between Canada and Mexico for Ford, GM, and Dodge. It's just all over the place. So even if they aren't going into effect, retailers and scalpers will still capitalize on that fear and that FOMO, that fear of missing out. And again, all of us tech content creators, I felt like we tried our best to inform PC gamers 
that if you wanted to get your graphics card, get it during Black Friday. That's the best time of the year to get it. But a lot of people didn't listen to that and they actually thought they could get their hands on any of these. And now they're out without a graphics card trying to fight innumerable odds right now. And it's not helping. And unfortunately, some of those people are buying from scalpers, which is not helping the situation whatsoever. If there's anything you can take away from this video to help this situation, despite all the global events that are happening right now, just don't buy from scalpers. That's the number one thing you can do to help out this whole situation. Just don't give in. It's not even worth it. You're buying a graphics card that is severely marked up in price, and some of these aren't even worth really going for. Overpriced. Because you know, RTX 5000 has been kind of a goopy launch so far. But let's talk about one tariff that is most likely going to be enacted, and that is Section 301. This is the tariff I am very concerned about for the PC gaming industry as a whole. In 2018, under the Trump administration, a new tariff called Section 301 was enacted, which imposed a 25% tariff on certain products made in China, pretty much anything with a circuit board. So this included graphics cards, motherboards, SSD, and other similar products. And I do recall making some PC build guides back in 2018 where the 16 gigabyte RAM kits that I used cost as much as like 85 to $90, which for then was ridiculous. Anyways, that did definitely increase the cost of PC gaming back in 2018 going into 2019. But then leading into 2021 with the Biden administration, they decided to put a pause on section 301. And they did that for 2022, 2023, and once again for 2024. But look who's back in office. And we have a deadline right now of this exemption going out of effect on May 31st, 2025. So let's play a game here. Do we think the tariff master himself, the guy who has been using it as a means of bargaining and whatever, do we really think he's gonna continue this Section 301 exemption on May 31st, 2025, considering his administration is the one that actually came up with it in the first place? Do you really think he's gonna be nice like that? No, no, guys, on May 31st, I am pretty sure this Section 301 is going to come back into play and isn't just going to raise the prices of graphics cards, but a lot of PC components across the board. And we can even see some leaks from some AIBs that they're watching Section 301 very closely. And if it does come back into play, expect higher prices across the board. So kind of to give like a little perspective on just how expensive graphics cards right now are before tariffs, there's a popular pre-built PC vendor called Power GPU, and in their RTX 5090 pre-built PCs, they retail, or not retail, but the RTX 5090s themselves cost $3,000 each. They're getting scalped before they can even put these graphics cards into their pre-built PCs to sell. They don't want to sell these PCs with $3,000 RTX 5090s, but they have no other choice, which is insane. Because right now, let's look at an RTX 5090. How much does one of these cost? Well, here at walmart.com, we can get an RTX 5090 Founders Edition for $4,300. So what, I don't know, is Walmart marking up this graphics card by like $1,300 that they can secure these for $3,000 a piece on a graphics card that should cost only $2,000 in MSRP? How much more are tariffs going to add to that? If you put another 25% to that, it's gonna be well over $5,000. Probably closer to 6,000. Yeah, and no, the company isn't going to take those costs up front. They're gonna pass it on to the consumer. Whenever has those companies who have encountered tariffs decided to take the brunt and reduce their profits. In America, that does not happen at least. So on one hand, this is going to make the cost of graphics cards even more expensive, which in a way proves my point that FOMO is, is what's driving certain people to buy scalped graphics cards in the first place, which you shouldn't do. It's not the most important thing in the world by any means. But what this also means 
is that I think graphics cards are to become so expensive at a certain point to where it's just not worth scalping them anymore. Scalpers are not gonna be able to pony up, what, over $5,000 for an RTX 5090 and I expect some casual to buy it. Some casual is gonna look up reviews of the RTX 5090 and see that it technically retails for $2,000, but you could only get them on like used marketplaces for $5,000. It's not gonna make any sense in their head and they're not even gonna consider any of these graphics cards. And that doesn't just apply to the 5090. It also applies for the 9070 XT, 5080, ARC, whatever. Everything across the board is gonna get more expensive by a decent amount. And I wanna say scalpers, hopefully, will get a bit demotivated by these tariffs and see that their profit margins are gonna go down from their scummy practices and they'll hopefully stop. So then to answer the final question, which I promised at the very beginning of the video, when exactly are you gonna be able to get your hands on a graphics card? Well, with section 301 going into effect at the end of May, and then seeing that tariff apply to incoming graphics cards throughout the month of June, we could see graphics card prices skyrocketing potentially in July and August, which means graphics cards, I think, as per what I said in one of my previous videos, if you are interested in an RTX 5090 or 5080, you're gonna have to wait until at least September of this year until you can realistically get your hands on one before the scalpers and the bots do. Are finally gonna be back in stock come September. Yes, they will be back in stock. They're just gonna be really freaking expensive. And uh, as far as if those graphics cards will come down in price, I don't know. I certainly don't expect Nvidia to back down on many of their graphics card prices. Historically, they never discount their graphics cards unless they made something atrocious like the RTX 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, which even discounted still was a terrible value. AMD is a little bit better. They could discount their graphics cards because they don't have as much market share as Nvidia, but they actually for once had a really successful graphics card launch and they may just keep those perceived MSRPs as the baseline price and not go below them whatsoever. So uh, it's gonna be a new norm maybe. We could see RX 9070s for over $700. We could see 9070 XTs for over $800 or probably even more because it's a more desirable graphics card than the base 9070. Uh, I told you guys to all get a graphics card in November and October. I made so many videos. I went from tech content creator to literally a salesman, which I don't necessarily like, but I turned into a salesman from late October to December because I could see some of the signs coming. I didn't necessarily telegraph these signs in those videos because I just didn't have enough time to mention it. But guys, um, you're gonna have to suck it out. Um, the next best time to buy a graphics card is probably also gonna have to be until Black Friday of this year. So you're gonna have to wait. Um, sorry, yeah, that's all I gotta say. So um, it's a little bit bleak, but what isn't bleak is subscribing to the Skyrivel channel. This is a cool place to hang. I'm gonna find ways to allow you to build a PC despite all of this and hopefully not get bent over by GPU prices. I'll see what things you can do to get around really high prices potentially and scalpers. I've got some things in the works. So subscribing helps as well as liking this video. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching and this is the Skyrivel channel, signing out.